J'ai pas fait semblant, je te jure. J'ai jamais dit non. J'ai juste. J'ai pas fait semblant, je te jure. J'ai jamais dit non. J'ai juste laissé le temps courir. The Aitaka Lut Show in Moria. By your sweetest, highest intelligent, polyglot, Principessa Sirkita. So now I was part of their Sunday matinee and afternoon lunch, Robert and Mark Parientes. Weekend retirement in Cuernavaca. Yet, uh, all of a sudden, I was also invited when Robert wasn't there. I was sitting once outdoors next to the pool with Marion. And Marion was very relieved. She was now telling me about her personal issues and she also told me that she was so relieved that she was so glad that I was there because now she wouldn't feel so lonely anymore. And that was kind of weird because I didn't really felt it. So <clears throat> that was one sitting. And then there was another one, another time. Yes, I did brought my cousin Yanya to them too, because he happened to visit me. And it was Sunday and I was invited to eat, so I told her, we go there eat. And as we exited, she started to fart on them. I don't even want to talk about my cousin. Fart on those are snobs and I know those type of people and you know like she she hated them and I was just thinking what an what an atroc way of handling she just had a meal how about thank you <laughs> yeah you know chicken salad and pasta she had a meal but of course she cannot appreciate because she always had food she grew up rich She had not only her black bread with cheese or ham or something or salami, she also had a slice of lettuce. And in her little Ziploc, Ziploc, I didn't, I didn't know what Ziploc were, she also had a little candy bar, like a mini Snickers or something, every day to school. How about, and a piece of fruit. I never got candy to school, nothing. Her mom cooked French food, moule, mussels I ate for the first time at her of fish and red sauce, which was disgusting. <laughs> but man, she cooked French and I was appreciative. <coughs> the few times I was there for dinner, my Aunt Magda cooked French. She used to do that a lot for guests, for the snob guests, because, you know, her husband wanted to be a snob too, Yanya's father. <coughs> so Yanya was traumatized, my cousin Yanya. Because my cousin Nenya is kind of vulgar, but in a tall body, and she's like demeaning, and and she thinks she, that means that she's informal, and she cannot dress elegantly. She doesn't understand about literature or art or riffiness, so that maybe scares her. Because you cannot see that Mark might be ignorant, <laughs> because it was his brother, the educated one. Yeah, uh, maybe Mark's brain is kind of, you know, <laughs> penetrable. <laughs> it's not in Anquos. <laughs> so he might have read the books, but it kind of didn't stick. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> because you cannot, you cannot see or understand that there would be a life expectancy about any intensity, you know, which you can maybe pick up from the books, uh, stick to Mark. Not at all. Because when you have insight, then, I don't know, life changes, and he had none. So, that was that. I don't argue with my cousin Yanni if she was farting on them. I don't say yes or no. But she also went to see Robert in Miami, by the way. So Robert wasn't there that day. 
And that was, of course, the worst thing I could have been doing to connect them because she hated him and he hated her. And I, I'm not sure what he said. He, he said, like, he told me how verdad is, her truth is. He told me, I don't know, but she, I should not have put not even Robert to the strain of, of attending Yanya in Miami. That was a, mis, a, a mishap. Well, never mind, it happened, it's gone. So, now what? The year stroke, next year stroke, and I got that job at the Cervantino because, I mean, I was offered that job for 50 bucks a month. And Robert was there and he said, take it. You can live here in my apartment. Otherwise, I couldn't have t taken that job because it would be too expensive to travel from Cuernavaca to the job. It would be more expensive than what the money I would make. That's why. Okay, it was 15 minutes away, the Cervantino. That was good. Very close by, considering we are in Mexico City. That was good, so I would do that. <laughs> Tell us about the coconuts. Okay, I went on a diet. <coughs> I have intended, I have tried out all sorts of shit, I have to say. <laughs> Remember in a Yunus and an empty stomach, do this, do that, do that. And suddenly it was coconut juice. No, I would take coconut juice all the time. When I would go up the mountain, Teposteco and Teposlan, back down, there's a little stand and they have like coconuts on the floor and the ice. And they would just, you know, pick one up, open it for you, put a straw in, clock. But they had them on ice, so it would be cool, it was so nice. So in a sudden I thought, I need coconut. Juice and ayunas every day one. So now I had to go to Mexico City. I literally, so my car didn't work out on Monday. That doesn't, doesn't make any sense. Anyway, that was the day I did not have a car and I had to bring my coconut. I remember the bag I had. I would literally travel. Martin Sovide gave me a ride that day. But I had to, he did not pick me up from my house, the shit. I had to go to La Glorieta, to the entrance of the highway. With my coconut, somehow I feel like some fell out of my bag. Five coconuts. <laughs> am I stupid? Yeah. No, am I crazy? Yeah, I did that too. Can you believe it? Yeah, that doesn't last long. These phases, they come and they go faster and sooner as you can believe it. Anyhow. So Robert has said to me, you know, the first time we, we actually had dinner, Robert and I, that was after the opera. Yeah, so very elegantly, gallantly, he took himself out of the affair to actually now flip a dinner and invited me to his apartment where there was a tiny little booth. You barely could sit. I think that's why he never became very overweight because otherwise he would not have fit in there. <laughs> not joking. So he would make a phone call and then some waiter would come and bring us dinner. As he explained and showed me, this is Mark's restaurant on the other side of La El Passage Polanco. It's called La Cosa Nostra, that restaurant, where Mark would, of course, spend the days and the evenings with other people, I don't know, sitting there in his restaurant. That would be his entertainment, doing PR, public relation, right? That was his A and O. He didn't have an I. <laughs> e. -E. So then Robert went back to Miami. I was now in the apartment. He said, yeah, do you order dinner? Do you order from Mark's restaurant? You just sign here. You you know, they give you a little paper. Sign, but just don't do it too often. I don't know what too often is, but um, I did that maybe two times a week. And then eventually, I went to, you know, at the weekends I would go back to my house in Cuernavaca, of course. I don't like the city. Yeah, Friday after, after you know, after work, I would take off immediately, go back. I'll see you next week. So I was invited to Mark. And now I was sitting again with Marion on her little liege out there for a moment. And suddenly she starts, she pulls out a bunch of paper 
and said, did you sign those? But the way she asked me, she treated me like I'm a delinquent. I said, yes. And that was that was her death, death sentence because of that Mark kicked her out. And now you want me to explain it? Of course. She was doing the accountability from that restaurant and saw that I'd signed for dinners. What would I order? Just the same as Robert. A salad and some dinner. I think I invariably had a caprese. You know, or maybe a ceniza. Yeah, typical Italian salad. And then maybe chicken, like what she would serve, and a little bit of pasta at the side. That would be it. Every time. No, there was no dessert involved. I doubt it. Simple. Italian restaurants don't serve steak. No, that's not part of the Italian menu. They have another thing going on, which is not that interesting. Veal or Milanesa or... Uh, no, thank you. I think I would order always the same. So she, she talked to me about... She, she asked me about this. Like, I would be doing something in hiding. Like, it would be forbidden. Like, I am delinquent after all this time and we are friends now, she said. See? I told you when she said, oh my God, it's so nice that you're here. Now we are, you know, we friends. I'm not that lonely anymore. And I just didn't felt it. It did not resonate it with me. Because she was stupid too. With all due respect. Uh, nothing happened after that. I exited, but of course I would not go back because I was mistreated. And Mark figured, Mark found out that she did that and was completely outraged because Mark has refinas. He handles himself refined and you don't ask a friend, which you had invited. I mean, I don't know if he made it clear. It's like Marianne, she is our family. Do you understand this? She's practically married to my brother. My brother had never brought a woman to my house. Can you not understand it? My brother has never brought a woman to my house. I don't know a woman, yeah, his wife, but that was a marriage by convenience because he needed the green card, remember? My brother had never a woman in his apartment in Polanco, and now Zilke is living there. Do you understand that it's just a matter of time he's going to marry her? She is your sister-in-law. What are you talking about? You cannot, you offer her fr freaking chicken because your, your brain is too small to figure any nice food from our Italian menu. That's all you can come up with, bitch. No, she ordered the same in all respect. Couldn't have, you know, bitch. And you claim that she is a thief. Are you stupid? Are you out of your mind? What, what's wrong with you, woman? Oh, yeah, wait, woman. Woman? Where's the woman there? Oh, yeah, you bear a child, so you did bore a child, so there must be a woman somewhere in that thing there. A uh, stick. And that's how you treat your family? Get out. In other words, for Mark, it was also not like, I cannot really handle my PR with someone who would disturb my public relation and my elegant lifestyle. So she had to pack her things with nothing and leave. Je rêvais d'un monde nouveau Sans excès cette fois Plutôt plus courtois Un monde bien plus beau Je l'ai déjà vu mille fois Mais jamais sans toi 